we will see the perceptron so this is the mccullough pitts uh, neural model or you can also simply call as mps neural model mccullough pitts neural model so this is the neural model mccullough pitts neural model and we will see the perceptron so this perceptron neural model was proposed by rosenblatt in 1962 1962 so this is the mccullough on the left hand side we are seeing the mccullough pitts neural model so this is the mccullough pitts neural model and this is the perceptron this is called the perceptron can anyone tell the difference between this mccullough pitts neural model and perceptron by simply observing the no negative way Oh, negative waves here i uh, i didn't say what are the values that they can take okay okay no negative weight other than that other than that what is the fundamental difference you can observe by observing these two structures the clock pitch neural model and perceptron so it is simply visible you observe carefully Only one major difference we have. Weights are different. Inputs, inputs. So that that is the important difference between the McCulloch Pitts neural model and this perceptron. Perceptron neural model or this McCulloch Pitts neural model is. So you can see in the earlier examples also whatever we have solved, whatever we have solved the logic functions. So we have taken the weights. same for that so here if you take w all should be w and if you take negative weights all should have the same negative weight but here for each input the weight is different for each input the weight is different so for x1 we have w1 for x1 input unit we have w1 for x a input unit we have w i and for xm input unit we have w m so that is the important difference between the mccullough pitts neural model and the perceptron so here the weights are same here the weights are same but here the weights are not same so that is the one of the major difference or the basic difference between mccullough pitts neural model and the perceptron mccullough pitts neural model and perceptron right so it uh, the main advantage of this perceptron r it is also simple structure and it is having the pattern classing classifying behavior the other one the ma another major important thing is between the mccullough pitts neural model and this perceptron is it is having the learning ability we will see how it is going to learn so that is what here the weights will get updated or it will learn the weights but that is not the case of in case of mccullough pitts neural model the weights are always the same the weights are not different so here the weights are different so the weights are different because of the learning ability to it can update the weights so we will see how it is going to learn the uh, uh, weights so the rest of the things are same so it will have m inputs m inputs and it will have the output unit as the processing unit and the connecting path from each input unit to the output unit has a unidirectional weight here also it is the paths are unidirectional paths are directional unidirectional and if the weight is positive weight is positive we will call that as excitatory here this w some of the w's can be negative also it need not be always positive So if the weight is positive, we'll call that is as excited input. If the weight is negative, we'll call it as inhibitory, right? And the net input, net input to the uh, this processing unit is nothing but the algebraic sum of the weighted inputs, right? We can write y underscore y underscore in as simply x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus and so on plus x3. W I plus so on so on plus X M W. So the net input is 
the algebraic sum of the weighted input. So x1 is multiplied by the factor w1 and x a is multiplied by w a and x m is multiplied by w m. Right. So this is about the perceptron. So here you observe the difference. What is the difference between these two? So both are perceptrons. Both are perceptrons only. What is the difference? So as it is mentioned, this one is without any adjustable threshold. So in order to take the decision whether the neuron has to fire or not, whether the neuron has to fire or not, always we should have some threshold. Some threshold theta that may be zero or whatever may be the value. So here it doesn't have in any adjustable threshold. So, so here we have that adjustable threshold as an additional weight. Can anyone identify that where we have incorporated that additional weight by observing the both the structures? At input side, sir. At input side, where we have incorporated that additional weight? At the beginning. Uh, that is what, in terms of which element we have included? X0. Right? So, X0. So, to this input unit, this, this is the additional input unit that we are considering here when compared to here. So here this W0, you can call it as the additional weight. So because of this, we are getting the adjustable threshold. Adjustable threshold, we'll see with the help of equation. So the difference is the input to this input unit is always one. The input to this input unit is always one, unlike the others. For the rest of the Input units we will give the regular inputs, but to this input unit, the input that we are going to give is always fixed. It is one. So the corresponding weight we are giving to this link from the this input unit to the processing element is W zero. So that we will see with the help of the equation. With the help of equations you can understand, right? Is it clear till now? So the difference between the McCulloch-Fitz neural model and the perceptron. So in the perceptron, we have the weights are not same. Weights are different. In case of McCulloch-Fitz neural model, the weights are always the same. And the second major difference is it is having the learning ability. It is not the case in case of McCulloch-Fitz neural model. And here we have an adjustable threshold. We have an adjustable threshold. So that is not the case of a McCulloch Fitz neural model. The threshold is always fixed. But here we can have adjustable threshold, right? So I will represent uh, in terms of equation. So y underscore in y underscore in is nothing but x1 w1 x2 w2 and so on. X M W M. Right? So in terms of summation, we can write this as summation i running from 1 to M, right? X i W i. X i W i. So the same thing we can write in terms of vectors also. The same X1 W1 plus X2 W2 and so on. X M W M. We can now also write in terms of the vectors as x1, x2, and so on, xm. This is row vector, and the weights we will write in terms of column vector, w1, w2, and so on, wm, right? So if you multiply this, we will get this equation, right? So here we are having one row. M columns, right? And this one is having 
m rows and one column right so if you multiply you will get 1 by 1 1 by 1 so that is nothing but x1 w1 plus x2 w2 plus on so on xm w so we can write the same equation in terms of uh, vectors also row this is row vector and this is column vector right so the same y underscore in we can write in terms of vectors as x into so this is the row vector and this is the column vector weight vector right w transpose or w transpose right so x is nothing but or you can write x is nothing but x1 x2 and so on x and w to represent also as row vector w1 w2 and so on w m so this is nothing but the transpose so this capital t is nothing but the transpose right so this is y underscore in y underscore in so y out how you can write y out y out is equal to function of y underscore in y underscore in so this output will be 1 if y underscore in is greater than theta greater than theta and 0 if y underscore in is less than or equal to theta right so y out in terms of the activation function f underscore y underscore in is equal to 1 if y underscore in is greater than theta and that is equal to 0 if y underscore in is less than or equal to theta so this is in y in function weights transpose are they this one this one yes sir so here i have written this w as pro vector pro vector so here we are writing in terms of column right so this is multi we are multiplying row vector we are multiplying with column vector then only we will get this sum so if you write both the rows then you will not, not get this the both here I have written as row vector. Both are written as row vector. So actually you will get this sum only if you multiply this row vector with this column vector. So here I am writing both x and uh, input and weights as the row vector. So in order to get this you have to take transpose. So if you take the transpose you will get column, right? So transpose is nothing but changing rows to columns and columns to rows, right? Is it clear? Yes, sir. So, in terms of the vector notation, you can write the same thing. One, if if x capital X multiplied by capital X multiplied by the y transpose is greater than theta and zero if is less than or equal to theta. So this is without any adjustable weight, adjustable threshold, adjustable threshold. If you like the video, please share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon to get latest video updates.